Welcome to Electron Line. Just to make sure that all this is grounded in sound classical physics as well, there should always be a connection between the quantum world and the macro world, let's calculate the magnetic moment for hydrogen in two ways. We'll do it the old-fashioned way, the bohr magneton way, well, maybe that's not the old-fashioned way. This may be more the old-fashioned way, but we'll do it the bohr magneton way using quantum mechanic concepts, and we'll do it the old-fashioned way using the old classical physics concepts. So we know that the magnetic moment is equal to the current times the area of the current loop. That comes out of the equation here, where the magnetic moment in vector format is equal to the current times the vector format of the area, which can be written as the area times the unit normal vector. So once we know that the, the magnetic moment is equal to the current times the area, what is the current represented by a single electron going around the nucleus many, many, many times per second? Well, the frequency is around 6.579 times 10 to the 15 times, or oscillations, I shouldn't say oscillations, but uh, rotations around the nucleus every single second for an electron in a hydrogen atom. So if we then define the current as the amount of charge per unit time, we can define that by the charge of a single electron times the frequency of oscillations by the number of times that it goes around. So that would be the current. It's the charge of a single electron times the number of times that it goes around. And we're going to multiply that times the area. So what we're going to do now is plug in everything that we know. That means that the magnetic moment using the classical equation is equal to the charge of a single electron, which is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. We multiply the times the number of times that charge goes around. So that is equal to 6.579 times 10 to the 15th per second. And it looks like I'm running out of room, so I'm going to put the rest of it in front of it because I'm running out of room on the back side. So mu is equal to, so we have the number pi, and then the Bohr radius, a sub naught, that's 53 picometers. So it would be 53 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, and we have to square that. So that's the area times the charge of a single electron times the number of times it goes around. And that should give us the magnetic moment of an electron in a hydrogen atom. So let's see here, that is equal to the number pi times 53e to the 12 minus squared times 1.602e to the 19 minus times 6.579e to the 15th, there we go, equals, and that gives us about 9.3 times 10 to the minus 24, so that would be 9.3 times 10 to the minus 24 joules per Tesla. So that's what we get using the equations and using the parameters that we know. We might be slightly off, but that's good enough. That's actually pretty close to what I was expecting. So now let's go ahead and calculate the Bohr magneton using the quantum mechanic terms. So we say that U sub B is equal to the charge of a single electron, 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. And that would be, of course, Coulomb's h-bar, that would be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And then we have to divide that by 2 pi, multiply that times 2, and multiply times the mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the 31 kilograms. And so let's, let's see what we get when we use a quantum mechanic term, so the Bohr magneton. So we get 1.602e to the 19 minus times 6.626e to the 34 minus divide by 2 divide by 9.11e to the 31 minus divide by 2 divide by pi equals and there we get 9.27 times 10 to the minus 24 9.27 times 10 to the minus 24 joules per tesla and notice how close we got with both results. The rest, probably just some runoff errors and some numbers that we don't have quite as accurate as we should. But you can see that this is how we calculate the magnetic moment of an electron in a hydrogen atom. We can use, either use the classical terms and the classical concept of 
um, of a magnetic moment, or we can use the Bohr magneton equation, and we get the same result. And that's how it's all tied in with the classical mechanics as well.